whether they attack me or they don't attack me, I don't care about those things. When they sit alone, they know I'm telling the truth. A president can say a lot of things and say nothing at the end. President Ruto has got a platform to speak and not say anything on Palestine, on Israel, on it. He can, that thing, it is called a diplomatic language. So you stand up and then speak like that about pregnant women who are dying and then you say we must keep quiet because if we speak, we are attacking the president. No. No. A pan-Africanist, when he sees children being murdered, a pan-Africanist, when he sees occupiers killing the rightful owners of the land, can never sympathize with such people. Palestinians can't give me anything. They can't buy me. Even if they wanted, they, they are not in no position to give anyone anything. They are in a difficult situation. At the age of 9 and 10, police raided my house, male police found us sleeping. They were looking for young boys and men. In my house, there were no men. There was only women. My grandmother had nine children. Eight of them were women. When they searched a full house full of people, they couldn't find men. And those male police had to strip off my mother, take off her clothes in front of me for them to confirm if she's a real woman. If you lived that experience, you will know what the Palestinians are going through. Forceful removal is what we lived in South Africa. We know what it means. Where you wake up tomorrow, yesterday you had all houses, land, everything, tomorrow you have nothing. That's what we're seeing now in Palestine. So many people, 9,000 people killed in weeks. No international warrant of arrest has been issued. The war between Ukraine and Russia has taken only 1.5. 1,500 people died in Ukraine, 9,000 in Palestine. Yet there is a warrant of arrest against President Putin. He has never bombed a hospital. He has never bombed a refugee camp. Let me tell you, even if the president of Hamas runs into a refugee camp, you have no reason to bomb a refugee camp. Once he runs into a refugee camp, that's the end of it. You're like, guys, you have to stop. We have to find another means to go and take him out there. Once he runs into a hospital, you have to stop. Because here is a pregnant woman who walks into a hospital. She's going to give birth. She doesn't know there is a Hamas president there. She's not part of the people who are raised that the Hamas president must go into a hospital. She gets killed for no reason. And then President Ruto says, I'm with Israel. <laughs> and then you, the young ones in his party, don't stand up to say, but no, it's not done. It's not done. We did that in the ANC and we got expelled for that. And we regret, no, and we don't have any regret for doing that. The elders have got the potential of destroying the future of young people. That's why they say they've got uh, Africa 2060 vision. But they won't be there in 2060, so they, I don't know what they are talking about. So you, if you are to be the youth, and the youth that must be taken serious, you must from time to time call your elders to order. That's how Africa is going to realize its potential. These elders have destroyed our continent through dictatorship, through family uh, arrangements, and the youth kept quiet. South Africa was liberated by the youth. When we have time, we'll share that story. The ANC in 1940s was dead until Mandela came in as the youth and Walter Sisulu and Oar Tambo developed what they called a program of action that revived the ANC and ANC adopted it in 1949. ANC was a sweetheart organization. 
which used to fight through letters to London. This youth said we must take up arms and fight now. The ANC agreed in 1949. That's what made the ANC to be what it is. When they got arrested in the 60s, down the line in the 60s, Steve Bigwe emerged was a young person, black consciousness. That led to 1976. That was the youth. What O.R. Tambo said to the youth of South Africa in the 80s, render South Africa ungovernable and unworkable. The youth did that. In 1985 and 1986, South Africa had a permanent protest every day to a point where martial law was declared state of emergency twice in one year because they declared the first one the youth were saying we don't care do what you want to do they had to declare another one because they thought the youth didn't hear but they heard and they were defiant and that's what brought 1994 because of the youth of the 80s so the youth of kenya can make kenya politics to be what you want them to be president ruto it's a new, you know, fresh air. Because, you know, it has always been like it is has to go between uh, the Odingas and uh, um, um, the former president, the Kenyatas. So when he came in, we're like, aha, we now are graduating the, you know, what do you call it, family di uh, dynasty. We said the family dynasty arrangement is going away. We said this was a perfect pan africanist I'm not denouncing him as not being a pan africanist All I'm saying is, stay true to what you are saying. It doesn't matter how many people are criticizing you or not. We still have a lot of hope in him. We still think that a right thing can be done. We need to de-dollarize. He said he's going to de-dollarize. We need to do away with the dollar. He said he's going to do away with the visas. We have to do away with the visas because Africa must be one. I must wake up. It's a four-hour flight from South Africa to here. I must wake up in South Africa and come and eat lunch here. And then in the afternoon, get into a plane, go back. So why should it be an issue? All of these visas, borders, must be done away. You know why they think we are xenophobic? We don't know each other. The more we do away with visas and borders and all of that, the more we are going to know each other and realize that we are actually one thing. There is nothing I am seeing in this room which I have not seen in South Africa. There is nothing that suggests to me as I wake up, as I walk the streets of Nairobi that suggests something different to me. It is my first time here. But it is as if I have been here many times. Why? Everything is familiar. These are my people. This is me. And, and to say you welcome me in Kenya is like welcoming me in Johannesburg. This is my home. Everywhere else in Africa, it's our home. You, the youth, must come and learn in South Africa. South Africans must come and learn here in, in our universities, cultural exchanges, and we must start to listen to the same music, watch the same movies, to do away with this Western imperialism that manifests itself through songs and television and movies and all of that. Nigerians have got it. They are on the right track. They need our support. How do we support them? We must join them in producing our own movies, our own music, and do away with Beyonce. I saw honorable member Senator saying she saw Beyonce in Dubai and did not even get starstruck. That's, it's supposed to be like that. Uh, she's a human being. Uh, so we, we're seeing one of our own. But you do that once you start having a self-respect to know that we are all are. We can do what they are doing. And we can even do it much more better than them because we are a gifted nation. Remember, we're surviving under difficult conditions of colonialism and imperialism. Imagine, as we survive under such condition, imagine if there were no such conditions. Would have been something else in this world. The world will be coming to nil here because of who we are. So many resources. 90% of the platinum of the world 
is found in Africa.